Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Marcus here again. Well, this morning, uh, the message was Kentucky is going to ban immediately any abortions. After, I believe it was 15 days or something like this, it had been 20 days. And I heard that uh, when they passed this legislation, the governor vetoed it. Now the Republican House, uh, Republican legislators overrode it. And this is to become effective immediately after the 15 days. I'm assuming that they're talking about still 15 days. You know, I grew up as uh, an American citizen, second class citizen, with the understanding that God created life and that to aborting a, li a life would be basically denying God the opportunity to bring a, a person into this earth. And uh, to me, that was, didn't make too much sense for people to do that. And so I would always come up with solutions as being abstain from sex until you get married and want to have some kids. I've had uh, all kinds of <coughs> reasons, not too many, <coughs> excuse me, but the basic ones. But I find out that there are other reasons why people perhaps don't want to engage in that responsibility. So some pro perhaps it was because uh, they could have been raped, uh, they could have gotten some kind of uh, threat to their own lives and going through with this procedure. And there might just be some other things that I might not understand but are quite prevalent in this conversation. And so there are reasons that perhaps others might have that I might not hold. And uh, so I find that if that might be, then perhaps the door should be open for situations that would merit it, whatever they might be. I do not know at this time. Nevertheless, <clears throat> it doesn't negate the responsibilities that come with men who make decisions on behalf of others or people who make decisions on behalf of others. The decision perhaps would uh, cause pain and suffering all down the life line. So as spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people, I'd like to address just what this means when human beings decide that they want to uh, exercise their God-given right in this particular instance. And they, if this is what they decide that they want to do, do have that right. The right to say that, ladies, regardless of whatever your reasons might be for wanting to abort this child, we, according to the, our beliefs in God and according to the rules and regulations that have been set forth by our state, we stand before you and tell you that we deny you that opportunity to exercise what you call your right to kill another individual. And we, by virtue of the law and our presence, demand that this child come into the world. And you can go back and applaud yourself because you've done one for the Gipper. But I want you to know that it doesn't stop there. Just like you exercise your power to carry forward God's plan to introduce human beings into this earth, just as you did that, you have other responsibilities as well because God sending this kid into this world did not stop there. God also prepared that that child would not have to suffer for any food, any shelter, clothing, so ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers, this now is your responsibility to make sure that as you geared up your power to make sure that you brought that baby into the world, now you're responsible to dealing with a system that will allow that kid food, clothing, and shelter. But it doesn't stop there. The opportunity, my friends, to have unlimited and unrestricted education, that that child that you made sure got into this world would have an opportunity to be as smart as he can be based upon his own interests. That is your responsibility to guarantee to that child that you brought into this world by your own power to make sure that that child have health care from the womb to the tomb. That's your responsibility to that child. It didn't just stop with standing out there taking control of the mama and making the mama have a baby. No, you got the rest of these responsibilities to do. And just to bless you so you don't have to worry with the pain and suffering of going through a struggle, it is to guarantee to this child an opportunity to engage themselves in a career of their own choosing that would allow them to experience their greatest joy the joy of life itself, the joy of being out here on this earth, the joy of being in a body. 
that's engaged in the process of creating all of the resources necessary to meet the needs and desires of people. This is your responsibility as well, not to just make sure that that baby came to the world, but that that baby came to a world that was reflective of heavenliness. And that throughout that baby's life, that baby would see heavenliness. So that baby could grow and understand what it means to be heavenly and engage themselves in the heavenly process without lying, without cheating, without stealing, without killing, without terror, without racism, without bigotry, without war. You see, you just can't get the baby out the womb and bring the baby into the world. You got other responsibilities to that child as we as individuals have to all children everywhere. Now I stand before you ladies and gentlemen and tell you that this is the way I see that any kind of loving God who is responsible for something as great as the earth, who is responsible for something as having the earth stashed with all the things that men will ever need, who is responsible for human beings being here. That just seems to me that, a, that as I see the forest grows, as I see trees and all these things exist, that God has got it together. And all I see is men trying to be God. And what do they, what do they call themselves as uh, reflective of God? When they got jets, especially on the religious side, when they got jets and planes so they don't have to mingle with you and I. And they can fly from place to place. I don't know who they're talking to up there. They say they don't want to be amongst the devils on the regular planes. But this, then they have mansions and they live in big resorts like people who are in the world who are crooks. They live just like them. You don't know the difference between them. This is their, uh, re this is the image they want to reflect to you as being led by God while you are sitting here suffering, while you are being murdered by evil. See, so that's that misrepresentation that you're getting from the church. And when it comes down to government, all they're thinking about is the same thing. Get yours, get yours, rob, rob. All of this, when a man rob God, they say, yeah, it's 10% tithing. No, my friends, that it has nothing to do with it. Yes, you're robbing God. You're robbing God, and every time you see a poor person, Without housing, food, clothing, shelter, you've robbed God. Every time you see a person who can't get the education, you rob God. Every time you've seen people who are denied health care, you rob God. Now, what's your 10% doing? Nothing. Because it ain't about money. It's about compassion for one another, knowing who the power is, and the power is God, and not a Republican, a Democrat, a man, or a woman, or American, or anybody else. And each individual that knows it will walk according to it and show it. Otherwise, you're nothing but a hypocrite. No different than Putin, Donald Trump, or any of these other guys. All of us, if we can't stand up for what's right for everybody, we are no different than Putin, Donald Trump, and the rest of us. Take it for what it's worth. 